The world has always been shaped by energy. Every empire, every war, and every major economic revolution has revolved around who controls power, literally and figuratively. For decades, OPEC has stood as the symbol of oil dominance, dictating the prices of fuel that drive the global economy. But what if I told you that a quiet revolution in Africa is threatening to completely redraw the world's energy map? What if the next great power shift doesn't come from oil-rich Middle Eastern kingdoms but from African nations developing groundbreaking energy technologies? This isn't just speculation. It's already happening in ways that global markets are only beginning to grasp. Imagine a world where oil no longer decides the fate of nations, where new forms of self-powered technology, renewable innovations, and wireless energy grids begin to replace the old fossil fuel empire. And imagine that this revolution starts in the very continent most often written off as dependent rather than dominant. That continent is Africa. For years, OPEC's power has relied on scarcity and control. The logic was simple, if oil is the lifeblood of economies, then those who own it dictate the rules. But new African technologies are undermining that logic, showing that energy can be abundant, decentralized, and, most dangerously for OPEC, free. From Maxwell Chikumbuzo's self-powered machines to breakthroughs in lithium mining, solar integration, and wireless power transmission, Africa is no longer just exporting raw materials. It is inventing the very technologies that may end the age of oil. Consider this. The moment a car can run without gasoline or even a charging station, the foundation of OPEC's empire begins to crack. Consider a grid where homes, cities, and industries are powered wirelessly, without pipelines, without drilling, and without the geopolitical games of the past century. This is the scenario global analysts are beginning to fear, and some are beginning to embrace. Because if Africa's energy innovation scale, OPEC will face an existential crisis. The organization thrives on global dependence, but independence is spreading like wildfire. To understand how this shift is unfolding, we need to step back and see the bigger picture. Africa has always been energy rich but profit poor. Oil in Nigeria, gas in Algeria, coal in South Africa, all extracted, exported, and exploited by others. But something has changed in the last two decades. Young African inventors, entrepreneurs, and engineers have stopped waiting for handouts from foreign investors and have started creating disruptive solutions themselves. Maxwell Chikambutso in Zimbabwe shocked the world with his self-powered generator and electric vehicles that need no external charging. Critics dismissed him at first, but as prototypes emerged, the conversation shifted from disbelief to fear of disruption. Because if one inventor can demonstrate that engines can run without fuel, what happens when entire industries adopt such methods? The car industry collapses as oil demand drops. Shipping routes designed around tankers and refineries become obsolete. And suddenly, OPEC's hold over the world economy begins to slip. It isn't just about Chikambuzo, though. Across the continent, solar farms in Morocco, wind corridors in Kenya, and lithium fields in the Democratic Republic of Congo are redefining energy independence. China has already moved aggressively to secure Africa's lithium for its electric vehicle empire. The United States and Europe, late to the game, now scramble to strike deals, fearing that if they hesitate, Africa will set its own terms. This shift means that Africa is no longer just a supplier, it's becoming the power broker. And for OPEC, that is dangerous. For decades, OPEC has relied on the assumption that no alternative energy could rival oil's dominance. Solar was too weak, batteries too expensive, and experimental technologies too unrealistic. But what happens when Africa proves otherwise? Wireless power transmission, already being tested in several pilot projects, threatens the very concept of energy markets. Imagine buying a car in Africa that doesn't need oil, gas, or even charging stations because the roads themselves transmit power wirelessly. Imagine entire rural communities leapfrogging the need for centralized grids and powering their homes independently. This is more than innovation, it's liberation. And liberation always shifts geopolitics. If Africa achieves energy self-sufficiency through its own inventions, OPEC's pricing strategies lose their grip. Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, and others can flood the market with oil, but if demand evaporates, so does their leverage. 
Think about the impact on petrodollar systems that underpin global trade. If oil is no longer the universal commodity, the very foundation of modern finance begins to wobble. Africa, once sidelined, suddenly sits at the center of the new energy age. But how realistic is this vision? Skeptics will argue that oil isn't going anywhere soon. Airplanes still need jet fuel, ships still rely on diesel, and industries still consume petroleum products. And that's true for now. But disruption never begins by replacing everything overnight. It begins by showing a working alternative and scaling it step by step. That's exactly what Africa is doing. Self-powered technologies show that independence from oil is possible. Lithium mining ensures that the batteries of the EV revolution will not be monopolized by the West or Asia alone. Solar, hydro, and wind installations across the continent are proving that Africa doesn't just have resources, it has solutions. And perhaps most importantly, Africa's population is young, dynamic, and increasingly trained in science and engineering. This new generation is not content with exporting raw oil and gas. They want to export finished technology, intellectual property, and energy independence. For OPEC, that is the nightmare scenario, because OPEC can manage competition from the U.S. shale industry or Russian pipelines, but it cannot control decentralized, renewable, or self-powered technologies spreading in Africa. You can regulate oil wells, you can block tankers, but how do you stop a generator that creates power without fuel? How do you tax or sanction a nation whose homes and factories run wirelessly? The answer is you don't. That's why global analysts are quietly acknowledging that Africa might not just join the energy conversation. It might lead it. And leadership means rewriting the map. Energy has always been about geography. The Middle East mattered because that's where the oil was. But what happens when energy can be generated anywhere without drilling, pipelines, or shipping routes? The map itself changes. Africa, once seen as a resource colony, becomes a technological hub. And OPEC, once untouchable, begins to look outdated. The cracks are already showing. Younger OPEC members are struggling to balance budgets as oil prices fluctuate. Some countries are quietly investing in solar and renewables, knowing that the oil era is ending. But they cannot admit it openly, because OPEC's power relies on confidence. Confidence that oil will always matter. Confidence that alternatives will never scale. Confidence that demand will never collapse. Africa's inventions are eroding that confidence. And confidence, once lost, cannot be recovered. We've seen it before. Coal once ruled the world. The British Empire was built on it. But oil replaced coal, and suddenly the great coal barons became relics of history. Today, oil looks unshakable. But tomorrow, self-powered systems, wireless grids, and renewable dominance could turn OPEC into the next coal empire, remembered, but no longer relevant. This is why Africa matters now more than ever, not just as an exporter of raw goods, but as the inventor of the future. The end of OPEC will not come from wars or sanctions. It will come from technology that makes OPEC irrelevant. And that technology may very well be African. The story of energy has always been a story of control. From coal to oil, the nations that held the keys to power control trade, politics, and even culture. But Africa's new wave of energy technology is breaking that cycle. Instead of dependence, it offers independence. Instead of centralization, it offers decentralization. And instead of scarcity, it offers abundance. OPEC thrives in a world where nations fear running out of oil. But what happens when energy is everywhere, created by technology instead of extracted from the earth? That fear disappears. And with it, OPEC's influence evaporates. It is no longer about controlling barrels of oil. It becomes about who controls patents, who controls innovation, and who can scale technology the fastest. And Africa is positioning itself to be that leader. This doesn't mean the oil era will vanish overnight. It means that its dominance will fade slowly at first and then suddenly. History always turns this way. When the printing press arrived, scribes didn't disappear instantly, but their monopoly collapsed within decades. When the internet rose, newspapers didn't vanish in a day, but the old media giants never recovered their power. When energy becomes self-sustaining, 
oil won't vanish instantly, but OPEC will never again be the empire it once was. And in its place, a new energy map will emerge. A map where Africa is not the exploited, but the explorer. Not the consumer, but the creator. Not the follower, but the leader. The world has always underestimated Africa. But this time, it might be Africa that underestimates how fast it will rise. Because the end of OPEC may already be written. And the future of energy may already belong to Africa.